How's it going guys, Lucas here. Today I'm gonna show you how to import G-Code into Houdini very easily. For that, we have a new addition to the Lazy Panda Toolkit and it's named G-Code. Super easy to use. You just click G-Code, you select your file, in this case the test cube, which is the good old standard calibration cube. If I double click that, it will ask me about my nozzle size that I picked while slicing and mine is uh, 06. So I'll pick that. You can see Python console is saying I created this node. You can just close that, doesn't really matter. And you can already see we have a cube. It's floating somewhere in the air here. So you might need to home to it. Just do space H to home to it. If I go inside, you can see create a Python node. And this Python node, if I make this a little bit bigger here, it's basically reading your g-code and it reads only the parts where the printer is actually extruding so you get all those paths here all those points and then it goes over it and it creates some attributes as well extrusion feed rate and position we need the feed rate later to remove some jaggy lines that it draws in between because it tries to connect all the points but obviously when there is no feed rate or no ex extrusion, you shouldn't get a line. Um, but we are filtering afterwards because filtering that in the Python script got very, very heavy. So I'm just doing it afterwards automatically as well. So yeah, it's finding out all the points, all the lines, connecting everything and creates the attributes. So if I hover over this one or let me click the info one, you can see we have extrusion feed rate and obviously the position. From there, it automatically creates a convert line, which just like cuts one big line into all the different ones. Like every every extrusion path now is like a separate primitive, um, so we can easily filter for the extrusion. So this vex code then is like checking the feed rate again, uh, promoting that to primitives because the attribute is on points. Uh, promotes it on primitives on, on with the minimum promotion basically and then it just removes everything that is zero and that allows you to uh, remove some jaggy lines in between. I will show you in a different model later what that actually means and then obviously in the end we just have a wire uh, that automatically adds a wire, wire radius of whatever you had plus uh, zero one basically so it fills the gaps a bit better. You can obviously go back to this as well. And in this case, it works pretty well. Um, but you can already see, let's say I would have like a grid here with or like only one floor layer. Uh, you could pretty much see through it. So most of the time it looks actually better if that's like a little higher than the actual uh, nozzle size. You can obviously change that as much as you want and obviously uh, tweak the normals and fix some of these edges as well um, but that really depends on each model separately so I didn't put that in the tool uh, because that's yeah that's per model so let me show you on a different model we can keep that here it's totally fine I will just go to G code I will pick um, I will pick this box here that I'm created at some point to hold some soaps. Um, you can see again, imported fine. Uh, this one takes a bit longer, obviously bigger model. Uh, needs a bit more time to ex exclude this. Let me close this. Let's go in here and you can see, again, pretty, pretty nice import. I don't see any flaws here. Uh, worked pretty well. It also renders pretty well. I tried with Redshift, uh, renders quite nicely. This here is actually my bad. <laughs> That's the model. That's not like the import importer uh, it used to hold magnets here uh, and i ditched that at some point i didn't close it properly so <laughs> that's on me um so yeah let me show you what this uh part here is actually doing so as we look closer here let me actually uh, it's a bit hard to see but i can quickly connect that directly and you can see we have a lot of these like travel move lines basically so what the convert line this one is doing it removes all those lines so it kicks them out based on the attribute so if we check here or well yeah if we check here and we check the uh, feed rate you can see i can basically filter on that because 
all these travel lines have, at some point have a feed rate of zero. And if I promote that to the primitives, which I'm doing here, um, you can easily remove those parts and that's what, what it's doing basically. So this should pretty much always clear up uh, your model quite perfectly. Yeah, uh, it's probably not useful to all of you, uh, but for some it probably is. Uh, it's quite quite handy to have because I always wanted to uh, render the 3D print as it will be printed basically. And I, you could do that with texture, but I'm not a fan of that. Uh, it doesn't look perfectly uh, as the print would look later. And this comes actually very, very close to it. So yeah, enjoy it. If you have any questions or if anything is not working, let me know. Um, I've written this one in Python 3.9, so I'm not sure if it works in 10. Uh, I need to check. I'm switching over to DD20 now where I will test both. So I will test 3.9 and 10 and make sure it always works for both. But yeah, I need to focus on one first and then transfer it to the other. Righty, see you in the next one. Cheers.